I am really getting a kick out of a scandal that happened during a handshake between C.J. Stroud and Caleb Williams after the Texans beat the Bears nineteen mm-hmm. thirteen on Sunday night. If you haven't seen it, we played the audio yesterday, but TLD watch Stroud goes up to Caleb afterwards and Caleb seems annoyed. He wants to go into the locker room, walks away, doesn't seem to be listening to CJ Stroud. Stroud pulls Caleb back and everybody has been overanalyzing the hell out of this back and forth, Joe. Yeah, I, I can't believe that this is such a a big deal. It's, it seems it seems really bizarre to me that like we have it's becoming a, a major topic. Everyone's talking about it. Like it's all over national media. It's one of those top stories on ESPN.com. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that just shows that like football sometimes is, it, you know, it gets in the weeds a little bit, and we got to find a story out of everything. And that's what this. Look, you do have you know the number two overall pick from last year, the number one overall pick from this year, guys that were in the Heisman you know race together in college. C.J. Stroud dominated the NFL as a rookie, and Caleb people have those expectations so maybe that's what it is like like i don't know if we if this is the same if this was in a couple weeks and if this was drake may i don't know if it gets the same hype i think it would i I think i think it would i think it's two different things here i think one it's is cj stroud good enough to be giving people advice two it's is caleb williams an a-hole because a lot of people don't like caleb williams i think it's these two dynamics have created an interesting conversation I like sitting back and watching the chaos because I feel like Stroud, having played one of the best rookie seasons we've ever seen from a quarterback, I feel like even if I'm the same age as him, if he's offering me advice, I'm at least going to be respectful when I hear it. Mm -hmm. I might be annoyed to hear it, but just given the setting, you know there's cameras everywhere. I would just listen. What's wrong with listening here? I get that you're the same age. I get that you beat him for the Heisman. But Stroud was awesome in a situation that wasn't very good, at least we thought, going into last year. Mm -hmm. So I I don't see what the harm is in listening. But I also can see how some are looking at Stroud and saying, he's kind of acting like Coach K used to do, head coach of Duke, going into other teams' locker rooms to offer words of wisdom after they skull bleep them by 30 points. Yeah, like If I was going to pick one to be more critical of, I think I would be more critical of Caleb here. I don't think CJ's trying to embarrass Caleb Williams or overstep his bounds. Like, I do think this would be a weird moment if this was CJ Stroud and uh, I know he's not playing, but Tua. Like, like that would be strange, right? Even though CJ had great success as rookie, if he tried to give those same exact words of encouragement to Tua, well, that definitely wouldn't happen. Too. Exactly, though. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's that weird. I also get why Caleb's upset, but if I was going to be more critical of one, I would be more critical of Caleb Williams here because you are in a position to where getting advice, free advice, good advice from people that have been through what you've gone through is a good thing for you. And, and just walking away with it, like from like in that situation, you're potentially missing out on good things before, um, before all of this, turns into the hot take offs that we got courtesy of a variety of different people weighing in on this, including ourselves. This is what CJ Stroud had to say yesterday about this moment between he and Caleb Williams. I had some of the best advice given to me last year. And, um, you know, me and Caleb, I don't, I, I was not trying to like treat him. Like I was trying to like little bro him or nothing. He knows that too. I have a ton of respect for him. I told him I had respect for him. Um, but I had so much, so many guys coming to me after games last year, and that meant the world, meant the world to me. Um, that 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 those guys even thought about giving me advice. So I just try to give back to what the game has given to me. So uh, I, I wish him the best, man. I want him to do amazing in this league. Um, I think he will. I think that he'll get his groove. And once you get your rhythm, I didn't get my rhythm until like week three, week four. So I, I can see him, his game picking up from from here. And so, um, and you know, I, I don't think. He was trying to like, you know, be any towards way. He's just upset that that they lost. I totally understand. So um, I have a ton of respect for that guy, man. I want him to do extremely well, just like any other guy until we play on that day. You know what I mean? After the game, we can be cool. You know what I mean? But um, I'm I'm definitely you know rooting for him and want to see him do extremely well. Stroud is already one of the best in the game. 
he's also the same age as Caleb Williams. If you're going to talk to Caleb Williams and give him advice, maybe be a little less obvious with it because the advice that he gave him was don't get hit as much. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, criticize the advice. Wasn't that great? The advice wasn't that great. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like the best, like, hey, man, but, is don't get hit. But I truly believe CJ meant well there. Yes. I, I don't think that CJ was trying to be a jerk. And I also, in Caleb's defense, my God, it was a rough day. He, he just he got the absolute bejesus beaten out of him. Seven sacks, 11 QB hits, 20 pressures. He wanted to get out of there. And this is probably the last thing he wanted to hear is from somebody that's about the same age as him that was on the Heisman podium with him where he, Caleb Williams, takes on the Heisman, not CJ Stroud. It, it is a situation where if I am in CJ Stroud's shoes, I do not think I did anything wrong. I think he was. He didn't. I think he was being. He was earnestly just trying to give some words to Caleb yeah. Williams. Yeah. I also, in Caleb Williams' shoes, completely understand just being like, "All right, dude. All right. Yep. Yep." Because th- in the clip, he does. He, he gives a couple of the um. Yep. Yep. Like when you're trying to end a conversation. Yes. <laughs> when someone's talking to you, and then it gets pulled back in. Yeah. The the comeback is. I really think that's where he. CJ, not overstep, but that's where it made the clip more awkward. 100%. Where, where Caleb Williams is obviously like, all right, cool. I'm done with this conversation. CJ's like, no, come here. You're going to be a great player one day. And there's a couple of different reasons he might have told him to come here because he might have felt like, hey, he he hurt his feelings. Like there was yeah. some beef or something like that. I I don't think this was like, hey, you got to listen to me. Yeah. Person that's the same age as me. You got to listen. It wasn't that. <laughs> yeah. It could just be like, hey, like. In the moment, it's like I think he needs like some more like reassurance here. Yeah. In the moment of yeah, it, yesterday was a disaster. <laughs> that game was a disaster. Yeah, it's like to- it's like when you have a, like an awkward moment and then you keep trying to recover it and it only makes it a little bit more awkward. It's yeah. like a version of that where where it was like uh, I don't really like where I left off. Hey, wait, come back, <laughs> and now that has made it work. And you already on top of all this have as he gets into the locker room. A pissed off DJ Moore, who even weighed in and said, like, I probably should have toned it down a little bit during the game. And you yeah, have just Roma Dunze's <laughs> dad is, is posting <laughs> clips of, of of Roma Dunze being open the first couple of games. I love that move. So <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it from the dad. It's a good dad. Yeah. He's a good uh, dad. Um, but this has blown up, and we got people in Chicago. Um, don't call him Bernstein. What a loser. Bernsey. Uh, had uh, in, in at 670 the score in Chicago. Uh, had Mike Florio on his show, and and Florio and Bernsey took issue with CJ Stroud. Did CJ Stroud become Tom Brady? That's very he's funny. not there yet. So I think I think it's it's just it was just a weird thing all around. I think it's not CJ Stroud's place to preach to a guy who's just one year behind him by way of experience. And from Caleb's perspective. You know, look, you just lost a game. You really, you, you, you know, you don't want to hear it. But I, I I, wasn't surprised. I was disappointed, but I wasn't surprised that the knee-jerk reaction by most was, oh, who does Caleb think he is? No, that wasn't my reaction at all. My reaction was, and I said, who does CJ Stroud think he is? Yeah, who does CJ Stroud think he is? That's exactly what Dan's reaction was. We're the same age, man. Yeah, that, that, that's the other thing. They're a year apart in NFL playing experience, but they're a month apart in actual age. And I think... They're more than a year apart. I I believe. I, I think C.J. Stroud is so much better than Caleb Williams right now. But that's just me. Perhaps I'm a little biased watching C.J. Stroud on a weekly basis, Joe. Um, it's I, I think the Chicago people, they're getting a little salty because Caleb is yeah. not what they all thought he would be because of the core of weapons that are around him this year. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I guess you're trying to to defend your guy. Um, I, I just, can't, I can't get over the fact of like the, you know, they got, so it's the guy after Floro talks, who's talking about this is the same guy we played the audio from last week in which he got upset at a guy from Barstool for calling him his last name, Yes, in which is the show name is Bernstein and Holmes. Like mm-hmm. I, I just, I find it terribly ironic that he's the one that's criticizing people for their actions when he's that much of a child himself. And, and honestly, just like post. a total like loony bin at this point. Didn't they delete the post? Yeah. And then they deleted the post. They deleted this post, which was a good clip. To yeah. Get the show engagement. But I don't know, maybe because they're getting trolled so much by all the stoolies. I don't know why they deleted it. I'm guessing it had to do with them. They're being trolled a lot. And they're like, oh, great. Now we got Houston on our ass too. 
Jeez, it's the last thing we <laughs> Aren't want. Aren't these guys Astros fans? <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't yeah, want Ast- these problems. You're, you're now, you've, the Astros fans know it's September. They're <laughs> yeah. sidetracked. They're like, oh, let's bully. Let's be Texas fans and bully this yeah. random Chicago radio well, host. I it, will say, like. We can't fire, fight a war on two fronts here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like, it's bully mode. Like, it's it was bully mode time in Houston Twitter streets again yesterday. It was kind of nice to see it be the Texans being defended with honor. Instead of just the Astros. A uh, couple of texts from the 281. Does CJ just talk too much? That is an interesting question. I don't think it's possible for a quarterback to talk too much. I think all quarterbacks say pretty much the same thing. They're trying not to step on toes. I have really enjoyed what we have gotten out of CJ Stroud to this point, And I hope it continues because there will come a point where CJ Stroud is sick and tired of talking to us and says nothing. I, so yeah. I, I get that some people are annoyed by what he says. I actually enjoy it. I think he's a thoughtful guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least he's interesting. Yeah. Um, more texts, uh, from the seven, one, three, and from the eight, three, two motions high after a win or a loss. It's not CJ's job to offer advice. Just say good game and walk away. You're not a therapist, CJ. Okay. But like, what, what are this for, from the other side, you know, happened in two weeks and it was Matt Stafford who was doing this to Caleb Williams. Like this is what veteran quarterbacks do. Yeah. So the real question is, is really just after How a veteran? year, does CJ qualify? How veteran are you? Yeah. Cause like if, if Matt, if, if Caleb walked away from Matt Stafford, there would be no defending Caleb Williams. He would be getting destroyed relentlessly. But because it's CJ, and he's only been in the league for a year, the question is more about, is Caleb in the wrong or is CJ too young to be giving this advice? I'll, I'll say it. He's veteran enough. I, I've seen some people pushing back like, oh, he can't. I'm sorry. He's light years ahead of Caleb Williams right now. He's light years ahead of pretty much all rookie quarterbacks in his second year. He is top five. Like I, I don't think that's debatable. It's the, What's really interesting is how close to Mahomes do you want to say he is? I, I still think there's a pretty big gap between him. But I feel like C.J. Stroud is closer to Patrick Mahomes than Caleb Williams is closer to C.J. Stroud. Uh, not even close? Yeah. yeah. It's not even yeah. close. C.J. Stroud is in, he's like top three in MVP odds. He's top. You know, his team is top five in Super Bowl odds. They're plus 1,100 to win the Super Bowl this year. The Bears are probably like plus 25,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caleb Williams hasn't thrown a touchdown pass yet. Uh, I do wonder, and this this is where we went on the Dell show, can CJ Stroud do this to Anthony Richardson? No. Okay. He should. Yeah, I was going to say, Caleb Williams has probably played more football games since high school than Anthony Richardson. Actually, he Oh, wait, you, has. Said, you said C.J. Stroud with Anthony Richardson. Caleb Williams with Anthony Anthony Richardson, you mean? No, I mean C.J. Stroud doing that to Anthony Richardson. Yeah, yeah, he can. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, he's played three games. Like, he's... <laughs> I, I don't know, do man. Sam, can you do it to Sam Darnold uh, Honestly, on I, I think Anthony Richardson could use a little obvious advice. Just, like, like, hey, don't miss wide open guys. Stop five taking yards. hits. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that would be funnier advice. Hey, guys. Just you should try to complete the ball. Yeah, I mean, I will say, like, I mean, I think I said this yesterday. I, I, I do think Caleb, like, after the game, I hope there's more of a conversation because when you look at what Caleb went through in week two, getting sacked seven times, CJ Stroud was sacked eleven times, five get five times in week one, six times in week two against the Colts as a rookie. Like, if he literally knows exactly what you're going through, yeah, he lived it. Last year, it's not just that he was a rookie. It's in his first two games. He got his ass kicked up and down the field, and he didn't even win one of his first two games. I'm I'm with you there. Uh, From the A32, why does age matter when it comes to advice? I I actually agree with this. I I feel like every now and then, you can learn something from a young person. Now, some young people are exceptionally arrogant with how they talk to you. No doubt about that. Stop looking at me. I'm I'm (laughs) older than both of you. I'm older than both of you. But you made eye contact. I'm talking uh, about arrogant young people. Whatever, Sean. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is that a young person can sometimes point out things that you don't see. Mm-hmm. And if you're someone who's curious, self-aware, reflective, are, are you just going to shut that out every single time? Sometimes it's warranted, but I don't think it always is. So I agree with that text. 